He moved across America to be a high school teacher. He wanted to make a difference, and they were happy to have this ambitious young man. But he had a secret, a terrible secret. It was a depressed area, a land of little hope in this life, but a world of hope for the next. Modern ruins, these people's homes, dilapidated and derelict, were contrasted by the churches next door, pristine and painstakingly preserved. But this young teacher was no stranger to hardship. The students there are very rough, drug dealers and delinquents. He wanted something better for them. He wanted them to learn and sacrificed his free time to tutor hopeless cases. And it was a thankless job with long hours and little pay. Yet he was making a difference. He was a savior. But suddenly, his world changed. One of his students recognized him on the World Wide Web, on YouTube. This man, this teacher, went online and had the audacity to speak of the possibility that God didn't exist. He made videos about theology and atheism in the privacy of his home, separate from his class, and forced those videos upon nobody. And those videos were watched by nobody except those who chose of their own volition to watch them. And watch them they did. They were good videos filled with logic not easily dismissed by theists. He was always civil and enjoyed the discussions that he evoked. How dare he? News of his presence online spread through his school like a rampant infection. He was ridiculed. They shouted prayers and insulted him. They vandalized his classroom. They drew on the chalkboard, telling him to go back where he came from, surrounding the words with crosses. And they didn't use chalk. They used marker so that it couldn't be erased. And some of the students asked him if it was true, but they couldn't bring themselves to say that damning word, atheist. And on the day before, they greeted him with a nod and a smile. But now, now they shake their heads and scoff as he says hello. They gawk at him as they would an alien creature in a glass cage. He was threatened with hellfire countless times, and they showed no remorse for his impending suffering. Rather, they were gleeful about it. He would burn for disbelieving, as if he deserved it, as if he could pick and choose his beliefs. This good man was condemned and shunned by convicted drug dealers and assailants, people who he went out of his way to help, people who knew on the previous day that this man was one of the good teachers. And they turned on him without thinking twice. And his fellow teachers confronted him as students gossiped about him in their classes as well. He was told to get rid of his YouTube channel before the administration had a chance to investigate or he'd certainly lose his job. All it would take is one angry parent, even a drug dealer's drunken parent, who needs to sober up before being able to comprehend the horror of his precious child having an atheist for a teacher. So at the risk of becoming homeless, he deleted his channel. In a microsecond, he lost his connection with thousands of friends. In a microsecond, he was cut off and alone in a place that hated him. In a microsecond, excellent, insightful arguments against theism, arguments we could all use, were wiped out. They won. They stopped him. But only for a microsecond. Here and now, we have the power to make his voice louder than they ever feared it could be. The power to make their bigotry backfire in ways they didn't imagine. They, of all people, should have known about martyrdom. He could no longer show his face, but he still has a voice and he has the drive to use it. Subscribe to him. Learn from him. Use his arguments. Make this video viral. Make his voice loud. He is now called Grappling Ignorance. It seems that those who were once fed to the lions have become the lions. But no matter how much they cheat, no matter how much they stack the deck in their favor, they will never defeat us. 
even as we have the integrity to be fair. We're invincible because we have a weapon that no Christian could ever have. Because the moment they have it, they cease to be a Christian. That weapon is reality. Atheists are everywhere, and we are as ancient as the very first God ever proposed. You cannot recognize us. We are male and female, black and white, gay and straight. The only way we can even identify ourselves is through our free speech, and many Christians would take that from us. But be very careful about how you treat the minorities of today, because we will be the majority of tomorrow. I fear that because of your deplorable treatment of others, the persecution your book says you will suffer will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't want that to happen. And I pledge here and now to never discriminate against somebody because they're a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew or none of the above. And I want everyone listening to me to do the same. And many of those who are offended by the mere existence of non-believers are willing to throw away freedoms that they claim are God-given and paid for in full by the blood of Christian patriots. And they're willing to do that just to shut you up. Why? Well, for many, it's because their cherished beliefs cannot even withstand the most basic of honest scrutiny. And some fear hell which is nothing more than an ancient system of control for societies that couldn't be properly policed. And some fear change, even when that change is for the better. And the rest, the ones who kiss God's ass, honestly believe that the omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent creator of all things, the most powerful being that ever existed, needs them to come to his defense. <laughs> that may seem outlandish, but it's not. Because for certain, you will never, ever see God fighting his own battles. These Christian apologists are full of intolerance and expecting us to swallow it, but I'm not allowing this first to claim this is a Christian nation and then proceed to try to merge their little doctrine into biased legislation like we should give a damn about the God they praise or their book of contradictions written back in the day, some mythological hypocritical bullshit that tends to distort shit and then you wonder why we all ignore this you're atheists to each and every other type of God, for all you know the one you worship it could be the fraud, yeah I know I know we're taking it out of context, that's what you would say next like it's so fucking complex Guess I'm an evil child of Satan, keep on mocking me Average Americans do not want a theocracy So keep your mysticism deep inside your mental prisons And let us grown-ups make our own decisions <laughs>